What really happens when you pray? Does the Hebrew word for prayer, tefillah, have an often misunderstood meaning? Can the information in its ancient pictographs reveal this meaning to us? Let's find out. Accompany me as we heed the words of the prophet Jeremiah and the apostle John. Join me as we investigate the sacred pages of the ancient prophetic text we call the Old Testament in search of Messiah. When we think of prayer, we usually consider that that's how we ask God for something. But is there more to prayer than that? Who needs and benefits from prayer? Since God loves us and already knows our needs, is prayer even really necessary? Can ancient Hebrew pictograms describe prayer for us in a more meaningful way? And does anything in the pictograms for Tefla point us to Messiah? David endured many trials on his road to becoming king in the nation of Israel. One thing he learned to do during those trials was to humble himself and pray to his God. In Psalm 69, starting in verses 1 through 5, he records the following lament. Save me, O God, for the waters are coming to unto my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am coming to deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I am restored that which I took not away. O God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. In verse 13, David pleads for God's mercy. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time. O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. The word prayer used here by David is the Hebrew word tefla, which in conventional terms is usually translated prayer. But this is a bit misleading. We think of prayer being a supplication where one can beseech, implore, or even beg for favor from God. There are other Hebrew words that could be used for prayer that accurately contain these meanings. Why, then, does David use the word tefla? Tefla is actually quite different. This is a noun that comes from the root verb palel, which means to intervene, to mediate, or to judge. For David, this tefla or prayer was a time of self-reflection and self-judgment in his heart, where he compares his life with the desires of God. During this, David confesses his sins are not hidden from God and that he doesn't really merit the blessings he is seeking. Remember, the ancient Hebrew letters are pictograms, which are pictures that are content-driven. One can determine the meanings of most Hebrew words if the content of the letters is known and applied. What can an investigation of the pictograms for Tefla reveal to us? Tefla is spelled Tav, Pe, Lamed, He. Tav is the picture of crossed wooden sticks and means to seal, assign, or to covenant. Pe or Fe is the picture of the open mouth and means to open, to speak, or a word. Lamed is the picture of the shepherd's staff and means the tongue, to control, to have authority, or the voice of authority. He is the picture of the man with outstretched hands to the heavens, and means to behold, to reveal, to pay attention to what follows, or the Holy Spirit as the revelator. A very interesting picture unfolds as we piece this content together. During the time David is praying, he is looking to the heavens and making his plea to the one in authority. As he speaks before God, his tefla is an appeal to the covenant God has made with David through his father Abraham. God will always have his people Israel, and Israel will always have title to their land. The Holy Spirit, the revelator, will not only reveal the heart of David during his prayer, he will remind David of the faithfulness of the covenant-making God who will be with David in his distress. 
This is reflected in the final three verses of Psalm 69, where David concludes with this, Let the heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moveth therein. For God will save Zion and will build the cities of Judah, they that may dwell there and have it in possession. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. There is also a message for us that is contained in the numbers that each of these four letters represent. Tav is the number 400 and stands for a divinely appointed period of time that will bring about spiritual renewal. Pei is the number 80, which is 8 times 10 and refers to a time of new beginning or new birth ordained by God. Lamed is the number 30 and points us to the blood of Christ. He is the number five and is a picture of God's grace and favor. This is great news for those outside of the covenant God made with his people Israel. This reveals blessing in the Tefla of the Gentiles. Here we see that by the grace of God at a time of his choosing, a new beginning or a new birth will be offered that will only come as a result of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Looking back on this event, the writer of Hebrews added this for us in chapter 9, verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this Hebrew word study. It is our prayer that you will draw closer to your Heavenly Father as you consider the divine revelation of Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of God. Until next time, Shalom. We hope this study was a blessing to you and encouraged you in your faith. For more Hebrew Word study videos, you can visit our site at thelivingword3d.com. If you'd like to investigate this further, you can get the book from our online bookstore at rockislandbooks.com.